Hey there, folks, and welcome to another update on our geologic situation in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, and thanks for joining me. Today is Monday, November 3rd. We're looking there at a webcam view over the Sunnukur crater area, a little few patches of snow there. They had a big big snowstorm about a week or so ago, uh, but then some rain came, so there's very little snow left on the ground, at least in this area here. Uh, another view here. I'll give you just looking towards uh, Grindavik from the mountain nearby Thorpjör. And so you can see the, the berm going around the town right here. Of course, the lava flows from some of these previous eruptions uh, and just a nice tranquil view there looking to the uh, south over the Atlantic Ocean. Thanks for joining me again. I thought we would review some of the latest data. We've got some graphs from our good friend Bruce Garner. Thanks to him and Amanda Joe for sending information to me. Um, I think the big question for everyone at this point is, when's the next event? And of course, no one knows for sure what when the next event is going to be. No one knows for sure what it's going to be. Is it going to be an actual eruption? Is it going to be an intrusion, an injection of magma in the subsurface? Those are all really good questions. So we don't know when. We don't know even exactly where, although we suspect highly that uh, this area just to the east of the Blue Lagoon power plant area is where we're likely to see the event based on previous um, things that have gone on there. We're not sure how big the eruption might be in terms of how much lava will actually come out of the ground in terms of volume or even how long that event might be. We've seen some eruptions last just a few hours and others go on for several weeks. So let's go ahead and get to the latest information. And if you're enjoying this, these updates, uh, there's links underneath the video description for ways you can donate to the channel and support our ge geologic education cause here. So let's go ahead and get to this Met Office update. Uh, this is from October 28th, a few days ago. Uh, they might put one out this week. Sometimes it seems like they're doing one every two weeks unless something significant occurs. But you can see the latest information here as of October 28th, about 14 million cubic meters of magma. So that's what they estimate and model the volume of magma to be. Uh, beneath the power plant area of course we know that we're in this window now because all the prior events have accumulated anywhere from 12 to 31 million cubic meters uh, million cubic meters of magma and so we know we're sort of in that window you know this thing could keep building uh, we might only be halfway there maybe this is going to accumulate 28 30 million cubic meters of magma before anything happens on the other end of the spectrum, we might see an eruption much, much earlier, just based on the volume we have right now. They recognize the uncertainty of the event. Let me make that a little bit bigger for you. Um, and yeah, the timing, who knows? And so they talk here about the, the deformation. We talked about that a little bit there. Earthquake activity has been very low. We'll look at that information here in a second. So very few earthquakes, just a few scattered earthquakes here and there, very low magnitude earthquakes. And so uh, the system still, is to, still seems to be able to accommodate whatever magma is coming up from that deeper uh, that deeper storage zone into this shallow uh, area. It's still able to accommodate that. It's not fully pressurized just yet because we would expect to see earthquakes start to uh, ramp up a little bit as we get more to a, a full magma storage system with uh you know more pressurization taking place so that's pretty much the the met office a pretty short one there let's go ahead and look at those earthquakes then here's the last 24 hours on the Reykjanes Peninsula, you can see Gudindavik here. Really nothing in the last 24 hours where we would expect um, the earthquakes to be, just east of the power plant along this northeast-southwest trending uh, dike, this zone that is the main conduit to excuse me, bring the magma up to the surface. We see a few earthquakes over here in the Krishivik system, but that's pretty much uh, business as usual. We see those quite often, uh, and there's no indication that these earthquakes over here are related to magma that's at least moving towards the surface at this point. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to look at earthquakes over different time periods though. So here's the past week. So here is Gudindavik here. And again, you can see maybe like four, four earthquakes. Looks like there was three just north of town. Again, these are very small earthquakes. This one in particular here is a 0.4 uh, in magnitude. This one up here just east of Selingarfelt is a 0.9. So very small earthquakes and a very few at all. And then that cluster or that sort of, uh, I guess not really a cluster, but this more scattered distribution of quakes over here 
uh, in the Krishovic system. Looking at not just the last week, let's look at the last month. So this is from October 3rd to November 3rd. Again, kind of zooming in near Grindvik. Now we did have that small little, I wouldn't even call it a swarm, just a maybe call it a mini cluster, uh, maybe a, a two dozen or so earthquakes um, that were right where the eruption has taken place in prior events and where we most likely think it will occur again. Uh, but these were quite small again 0.8 these were all i think below magnitude one um, and those kind of came and went about within the last week or so maybe two weeks or so ago and then a few earthquakes down here closer to town but again nothing um nothing alarming there nothing that sig signifies or seems to indicate that there would be something bigger taking place and then of course with more time here a full month you know you're getting a, a little bit more earthquake activity over here where there just kind of seems to be an ongoing uh you know just ongoing uh presence of earthquakes here um, but again nothing here that seems to indicate that we need to be looking at this area anytime soon in the near term in terms of uh, magma movement or any sort of eruptive activity uh, and then the last thing on earthquakes here i thought it'd be fun to look at the last event so this is actually looking at so remember our last eruption was on july 16th of this year so i thought well what did it look like the month prior so this is june 15th to july 15th and you can see there was quite a few more earthquakes than, than the pattern i just showed you that's been happening recently uh, just north of good end of it. so there were quite a few earthquakes right near town and then that cluster there that sort of um main eruptive area getting maybe the lion's share or a good bulk of those earthquakes right in there so just just a good comparison to see you know what we might expect you know as these earthquakes hope hopefully i mean in terms of not hopefully but it, um, you know most likely these earthquakes will ramp up going forward um and so this might be the pattern we we might see again this is just looking at one specific eruptive cycle each one seems to have you know slightly different nuances and variables and characteristics but there is some sort of patterns that are showing up here just sort of in the with you know in a broad sense um okay so switching over to the gps data uh, if we come down here and look at uh, the data you can see that the uplift continues i'll show you this quickly but let's look at some other plots that might be more informative so here's the svart Sengi station and you can see the uplift that's gone on for the last three months but let's switch over to um, a, a larger timeline plot. So let's go to the same Svartsingi station and let's look at this over the past year because I think this is a bit more instructive. So here we can see with this bottom plot here, months of the year. So going all the way back to the November 20th eruption of 2024. Then you can see inflation. So this is uplift as we go up on this graph inflation leading to the april 1st eruption of this past year then there was deflation um, then magma kept accumulating causing the land to rise inflation leading up to that july 16th event and then again deflation following that eruption and then here's where we are now uh, we're we're well above the last the highest point for the july 16th event um, but you can see that that's kind of the pattern right that the november event was um you know there was an increase from the highest elevation there to the april 1st event and then there was another subsequent increase for the next event in july so we were probably going to see the same sort of thing here the question would just be you know how much of a jump is it, it looks like from the d november to april uh, events we probably had oh boy let's see here maybe 40 millimeters there maybe about uh 60 to 80 millimeters of uplift again looking at this one here maybe about 120 this one was a little less maybe about yeah maybe only 60 or so there um, and here we're just above 200 let's call it 220 to be generous so we've had about 40 millimeters of uplift um, so again this is just one way to look at it and this is just one specific station if we maybe go to another station in the area uh, that might be helpful let's see what this one has to show oh let's go look at it sorry let's look at it with a Let's get the 90 day, or excuse me, the one year plot. That's what we want. So the one year plot here, this is a, another GPS station, a little bit to the uh, west. So you can see the same sort of thing. November, it drops after the eruption, November 20th. Increase to the April 1st, drops. 
increase or inflation to the July 16th drops. This one's interesting because it, it shows us only pretty much on par with that ele maximum elevation that we had on July, just prior to July 16th. So this one would maybe seem to suggest that we've still got a few uh, weeks to go before we get to that next event. So there's lots of different ways you can look at it and slice it. I'll share with you in a second here uh, some of Bruce Garner's graphs, which I think are in, instructive. And he uses, you know, a little, he uses three specific GPS stations um, and then kind of balances that out as a way to forecast a potential window for the next event. Uh, so that's our GPS data, the INSAR uh, tracking as well, showing inflation. This is a run from October 7th to, to October 18th. So you can see the, the even, there's even a little red dot there, which is nice. Or in other words, the purple to the purple. So we've got one uh, fringe of color, if you will, one spectrum of color. And so that corresponds to about two and a half centimeters of uplift. So we've got about two and a half centimeters of uplift from the 7th to the 18th of October. Again, just showing us what the GPS data also indicates, and that is that the area is still inflating as more magma moves up into the area. So finally, let me share with you um, Bruce Garner's information that he sent to us and appreciate him for doing that. So here is his latest plot he sent me a few days ago. Um, so he's using three specific stations shown up here in the two colors, blue, red, and yellow. So three specific GPS stations, uh, which he believes probably track in or easiest or the best ones to model this behavior. And then all he's doing here is tracking those three GPS stations uh, elevations over time. So this starts back in uh, September of 2024 goes up till the last data points here are right around the first of uh, November, end of October, somewhere in there. And then what he's doing, I believe, is just seeing what what was the increase from one event to the next. And sometimes you can see um, his predicted lines, these horizontal lines here is what he predicts, um, you know, the elevation will need to get to before there's an eruption. And sometimes he's off. You can see this eruption here back in November of last year, it erupted much sooner than he thought it would based on just sort of the analysis he's running there. Uh, but then you can see a pretty good correlation here with the um, April 1st event. And then here we are with the July event. Again, it erupted a little bit sooner, but pretty close. And then what we have right now is a window based on Bruce's analysis of about November 27th to December 8th. That seems to be uh, the most likely window when we might see an eruptive event. Again, it's just one way of an analyzing these things. It's not hard and fast, um, but at least gives us you know some sort of measure. Um, and then obviously with these iterative eruptions, we can kind of see how accurate uh, his forecasting method is. So fun stuff there. And then the other thing he sent was looking at the total number of earthquakes. So this goes back to, uh, again, September of 2024. So on the y-axis, we have just total number of earthquakes. So you can see these tiny little blue uh, uh, bars at the bottom. That's just total number of earthquakes. So very few earthquakes taking place. Uh, and then the big spike here is the uh, April 1st event. Okay. Actually going back a little bit, I so the pink bar here, this is eruption or event seven. So this was the November 20th eruption and look how few earthquakes preceded that event. There was very few earthquakes that preceded that eruption last year in November. Um, but then we had quite a few eruptions or excuse me, earthquakes that preceded the April 1st er event. Let's remember though that the April 1st event was a little bit different than other eruptions. It was both an intrusion and an eruption and it was probably 80 to 90 percent intrusive activity, meaning the magma mainly moved underground and because it was moving underground into new territory or new areas, uh, it broke a lot of rock, uh, caused a lot of pressure on the fractures, caused a lot of earthquakes. And so that's why we have so many earthquakes that we see there. Um, and then this is the most recent eruption here in July of this past year. And you can see something in between the two, right? So we had, you know, the day before the eruption, upwards of 500 or so earthquake events. Uh, and then that July eruption went on for uh, a couple of weeks before it dissipated. But now you can see where we're at here. And let me get my my mug out of the way so you can see how small these earthquakes are. Just tiny, I mean, we're looking at just 
sometimes, you know, single digit numbers of earthquakes per day in the area, uh, sometimes up to maybe a dozen or so. And I believe here he's just kind of zoomed in this part of the graph so we can see it a little bit better. Um, but the whole point here is very few earthquakes that we're seeing looks a lot more like what we saw prior to the November 2024 eruption than what we saw in April. But again, you know, prior to the April one, there really wasn't that many earthquakes happening until basically the day of the event. And then there was quite a few earthquakes and then, uh, you know, some residual quakes sort of in the aftermath of that. So fun stuff here, just lots of different ways to look at the data, to slice it. Um, you know, we're all just sort of, you know, doing our best to forecast these things. Um, nothing is known for certain, but we are entering this phase. I would say there's a good chance there's going to be some sort of activity in 2025 before the end of the year. Um, but this volcano has shown us, you know, not to not to be so uh, definitive in our analysis. So we'll just kind of wait and see how things go. I'll keep you up to speed as best I can with these things. And I appreciate your support of the channel and for watching our update and take care.